upset that that happens. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, it's so disappointing. Right when things are getting good, it falls apart. Oh, I'm not seeing you here on the feed. Hold oh on. no, really? Oh Hold no. Let me refresh it again. See if you're here. Oh, okay. there we are. I see okay. you. Okay. Okay. I see you too. There we go. <sighs> that. Okay. Let's see here. So hopefully we can get some people to come back while we finish. And if not, that's okay. We'll just finish. But right now I can tell you that this um, ice storm is, no, it's not. Never mind. I forgot that I was thinking I was using strawberry skies. I'm like, this is so green. It's, I think it's the spicy plum. I'm really happy okay. with the colors so far. So I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to see if I can get back to where we were at. Okay. Yay, Amanda. <laughs> Oregon dude. I th Adam, I think, you're, did you say your name was Adam? I think you said it was. Um, Moon dies, Denise, Terry. Okay, perfect. You guys, I am really sorry that this is happening. It's it's not me. You know that. If I had control over it, this wouldn't be happening. I don't know why it's doing it. But if you guys remember last time, right around this two hours, two and a half hours, it started going like this. So frustrating. Okay. Yes, Adam. Oh, so we have a handful of folks back. Marco, it looks like you were able to get all of your ice back on it. I'm, I'm, I've fallen behind because I was doing all the, the computer stuff. And now I'm putting some strawberry skies on the point of that um, shibori that's at the, the base of it. The shibori that's standing up that the muck's going to flow under. I figured I'd put some strawberry skies on the point and see what happens. Ooh, some dye over ice. Yeah, that'll be pretty. Okay. Okay, so what I'm I'm going to do is I'm going to step over to the ice machine really quick. I've got my protective layer of ice cube ice on here. And I'm going to come in with my um, my regular ice and just cover it over top. Get a nice good layer. So I'll be right back. Like a bunch of you made a battle. Why? We are not mucking these. Um, I don't muck, I uh, generally don't muck my shibori and I never muck my Farnsworth folds. Um, and the other thing that I don't do with a Farnsworth fold, this is imp important to remember, is if you see that the dye has not soaked through all the way to the base, because that's what I do. I after the ice is melted, I pick it up and I look underneath to see if, if the dye has made it through. I don't flip it because if you flip it, you're going to get a cross in your angles. Um, so uh, I'll just add more dye to the top. I'll just follow those same lines where I lay dye down and I just add more dye and ice, trying to push it down through to the bottom. Um, if you did want to flip it, what you would have to do to not get a Cross in those uh, incline lines is you would actually want to bring that fat bottom end up to the top and flip that direction and lay die down so that your melt angles coming through the layers that angle would match and you wouldn't end up with like confusion of the layers if that makes sense. And I agree with everything that Margo just said. So, uh, one hundred percent recommend that you do not flip it force more ice through it and if need be add more dye just like she said so that your pattern stays the same you guys see most of the time i don't flip my projects it just depends on what it is but i agree with this one trying to match everything up and get the flows to be the same i think it would not i don't think it would work i mean do it for your own self to experiment and learn Try not to. I'd rather have a little bit of white space than, you know, flip it and completely change the entire project. So, okay. So now, oh, I'm flustered. It's like my heart is beating so fast 
Um, because it takes a lot for me to like fill it all back out and to get it up and live going. That's why it takes so long. And so I'm like, I'm so mad at them right now for, for doing this. There's no reason why it should cut out like that. And we were so close to the end. I know it just, it, it, it makes no sense. Um, so, I mean, I'm not like angry and having a total conniption, but I, I feel like, you know, all of us, we're here, we're doing a good job. I work really hard to bring out content for YouTube and they benefit, you know, they're making tons of money. Like why just leave me alone and let me do what I got to do here so that all of us can have an enjoyable experience. Okay. Now here's the thing. I've created this beautiful boat and my die is going to just stay put. You think I should slice the bottom so all of it runs out? Yes. Okay. So let me, I'm going to find my, my scissors here. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut the bottom open. And that way, as the ice is melting, it can just, just like as if it was the gutter, it'll be nice and open. Oh, but there, like my, all my ice is coming out like popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> whoops okay i i cut it open a, quite a bit but not not so much that um i mean it's gonna flow out but it's gonna hold my ice in oh i'm already i'm peeking down here i'm already seeing the uh beautiful um spicy plum green and magenta oh it's very exciting Ooh, nice ah <laughs> there went all my ice whoops oh well here, I'll throw a couple big cubes on there and then it can't fall out. It sounds like popcorn hitting my my bowl. Now, unfortunately, I was gonna do a two for two. I didn't tie one up. Um, I didn't tie one up in advance. I was gonna do a scrunch. I was gonna do all kinds of things, but the way things are going, I'm not. I'm just not gonna do it. I might off camera once we hang up. Maybe I'll just spiral something up real quick and see what the colors do. I'm just pecking my, my cubes up on there. Yeah. And what we were talking about with the two for this time is putting the, and what I did here is put it right at the base of the other thing, instead of down in the muck, it's up here on the rack. And because of this, um, because she's got the aluminum foil underneath and I've got this flexible cutting board underneath, it's forcing all of that muck to flow down underneath that. And so hoping that this shibori fold, it's gonna wick up into it. And then I put strawberry skies on the point to come down. So I we'll think it, I think it should, in theory, it, it should. It should just fall right in suit, suck up all that. And it should get good, um, striking because it doesn't have to wait for it to go down into the tote and then over to it. It's just right there, like all one project. So I'm super excited. I thought when you said it to me, like, what about doing a twofer? And then what about doing a shibori? I'm like, oh, that's such a great idea. Super excited about it. So I don't think I really need any more ice. I just, it's like, it's sitting here melting. So I'm like, why not? I'll just... Okay. Yeah, I, know. I had I had some ice left, so I just piled it on. So I'm, you know what though? The more I mess with it, it's like the more it's falling apart. So you guys, if you're new to tie dyeing, if if your ice is being crazy, if you just kind of let it melt together for a second, it's gonna form like this really nice giant ice cube. So as as it melts a little bit, it kind of refreezes to itself. Well, and you can even spritz it with a little bit of water, and that helps it fuse. Oh, that's, yeah, I've never done that before, but that, you're right. That's a really good idea. I did that with a project earlier today that was kind of driving me nuts with ice going everywhere. And I missed it and it held it together. And then I let go and it had fused. It's like, it's like glue. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, I've never done it before, but I mean, I could, I can totally get that. Like the whole idea of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, like part of me right now, because I knocked all my dye everywhere so badly, I feel like I want to just sort of like help it along and do a little sprinkle. I'm going to resist that urge at this time. 
I'm going to just let it go down, see what it does. So this is my plan for this project, okay? So I'm going to let the ice melt, do what it needs to do, and I'm going to check it and peek on the back and all of that. If I need to, I'm going to add a second layer of ice. If, it, if I feel like I don't have enough saturation, I'm going to basically repeat the process. I won't put as much dye on, but, you know, like back here where I'm really worried about the thickness, I might add a little bit what does that sound like a good idea do you think yes yes okay i cut my thumb i don't know what i cut it on but okay interesting so i don't mind having a little bit of white space in my pleats though i feel like that white space really helps the colors shine so yes. i want to find that happy medium okay so I, I think you already just said but in case it got lost in translation okay what are you doing now like from here, where are you going with your project? So um, after the ice melts, I will, if there's any undissolved dye on top, I will take that um, hot glauber salt solution. So one teaspoon of glauber salt in a four ounce bottle. And oh, and we were talking about the bottles earlier and I don't know where my bottle went, but um, let me, let me just grab that. Oh yeah. Also, links for the bottles. They look like great bottles and the lure lock top. I will yeah. I will get I'll get links for all of this good stuff that she uses. So that this top little nozzle screws off. So you could squirt right out of this, but I like this top. And um we found it's Gaunt Industries. And um you can order your bottle size and the color of the bottle and then there's different size tips this is a 14 gauge 45 degree angle inch and a half long tip and this has been my favorite um and so yeah so I'm, i'll take this and i'll fill it with um i'll put in a teaspoon of hot of, of teaspoon of glauber salt fill it with water and i throw mine in the microwave for like 30 seconds and check the temperature and then when it feels hot um you know i shake it up make sure it's all dissolved i will slowly drizzle that over to dissolve any unmelted dye and then uh let that sit for like an hour and if the dye still has not made it all the way through to the bottom then i would add more dye and ice um after everything is melted and gone through to where I want it. I have, um, it's a food dehydrator that uh, goes up to 156 degrees. And I will take this and I will put it into, I, I, I've been using an aluminum pan that I'll lay a um, uh, microfiber washcloth down on and I lay my project on top of that. And I put it on there with a cover over it for a few hours. And I've got a laser temperature gun and I check the temperature on it. And when it's gotten up to, you know, over 100 degrees and so it's been in there for a few hours and I know it's nice and hot, I'll turn it off, let it sit for an hour and cool off, and then I rinse it. So I, I have so patience. How long, how long would you say the, the start to, like after the ice melts, you've done your flush and all that, batch time. By doing uh, the hot water, are you increase? are you speeding it up, the, the batch I, time? I'm, I'm speeding it up with the food dehydrator because oh, yeah. the food okay. dehydrator is heating the whole project up. Okay. Um, and that has worked really well for me. Those bucket dye sweatshirts that I did, the hoodies that I did with the strawberry skies and had the beautiful blue on it. Um, the blue that, so that that was down in the muck and I would pick up the hoodie a little bit, let the muck flow under and slowly set it down in and put it right on that dehydrator. And it would heat the whole muck up and really help set that blue in the base of it. And that seemed to work really well. I love that thing. So do you, are you batching for 24 hours, shorter than 24 hours? Uh, I know, cause I know you're heating it up. So yeah, it's shorter than 24 hours. Um, okay. You know, some of it will depend on time cause I have to go to the office tomorrow. So I'm yeah. not going to be able to do any of this till tomorrow night. Okay. Um, if the ice is melted in the morning, I may put it into the food dehydrator and let it run for a couple hours before I leave, shut it off and just let it sit there all day. And then I'll rinse it tomorrow night. But I'm, I'm hoping to have results on this tomorrow night. You'll have to, if you can share with us this food dehydrator, because 
it must be huge. I can't, what, you know, how to fit something so large, like this, all this tote and everything in a food dehydrator. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. So oh. uh, I, I have, I have tea. I, I'll show you. Okay. Because in my mind, I'm thinking of like, remember the Ronco food dehydrators and you could make uh, fruit roll-ups and stuff. The guy that coined the phrase, set it and forget it. Um, I'm thinking of that. Like, how do you get all this in there? I love that shirt you're wearing. Like, the, it is so okay. beautiful. This is it. This is the whole thing. So it's really not big at all. And I'll put um, like a, a glass baking dish on here, or this is the aluminum tray I've been putting on. And I put my project on here on a microfiber cloth. And then I'll take one of these bins and I'll put it over the whole thing with just the, the one end tented up to make kind of like this oven that what? bakes it just the temperature I want it. Because if you look at the dial, it, it, it's our range that we want. So it's not going to overheat things. That's it, huh? I don't That's think I've it. ever seen one of those before. Wow. Amazon. And it has these, it has these shelves that um, come off of it. And so then this is the base. And then uh, this comes off that. You can wipe that out because I had um, a little bit of dye dribble in there one time. But I mean, it's, it's lightweight and really easy. And like I said, if you can figure out a way to set it on there so there's still some airflow out of it, and then I just put one of these bins right over the top of the whole thing, and then it just kind of creates this whole environment of this air flowing at 156, 158 degrees. Um, you know, maybe I'll put some uh, like plastic wrap over the top of that. I also bought some silicone Ziploc bags that I can throw stuff inside and throw those on here. I've kind of played with all sorts of different things, but it works. That's not at all what I thought it was going to look like at all. Like, I don't know. So it doesn't go inside it. It just goes on top of it. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I'm, I'm half, I'm half tempted to pull my phone down and walk around the corner here and show you how I heat my stuff up because it's not like this at all. I use an electric blanket. Well, you guys, I'm going to do it. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but here we go. So, um, and it's dark. I'm going to, I'll show you. I've got, I've, I'm back to uh, doing the, um, working on some of the um, single color ice dyes for Dharma. I, it's really hard to see, so I'm sorry. But I on my floor here, I've got uh, the electric blanket can't tell you sunbeam and inside here i've got my tote and i've got wrapped up the next colors that are going into the single color ice dye so you see how i have to do it i have to make sure that i've got a lid and everything like that because obviously i don't want to muck up my blanket but i just uh I cover it up wrap it up like a little burrito turn it on high heat and then I put this great afghan over top. And I just let the stuff roast. So, but my thing is I have to be able to, <clears throat> I have to be able to cover it, you know. So that's, that's such a difference. So I just gave you a sneak peek at what I got going on. Those are the upcoming videos <laughs> coming. But, um. But it, so for flat projects, it works really well. But if it's an incline ice dye or anything that's exposed, like in a gutter or hanging out of the edge, or I, I can't do anything to create any heat. So I like this idea of this uh, food dehydrator. Yeah. So you'll have to you'll have to send a link, and then I can put it up. Or you put it up. You can put it up on your page too, um, so that we can check it out. Because I'm interested in anything that's going to help. I, I, two things: anything that's going to help speed up the process, and anything that's going to create brighter, more vibrant colors, especially the turquoise colors. So, because where I live, it's it's you know it's kind of chilly a lot. And you know, blue blue needs needs the warmth to uh, be the most vibrant. 
So somebody is mentioning um, using a heater. And so my, my uh, gutter here, it's one of those expandable gutters. It's one section shorter now because I tried uh, setting over the heater because the heater was set at 86 degrees. So I thought it'd be fine and it melted it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Anything, anything that has like open, well, I wouldn't say open flame, but like propane heaters or, you know, stuff like that. I mean, you do run the risk of like burning down your house for sure. Well, it's an infrared heater. It's an electric heater, but still it was, oh. just, it was too much for that. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm looking here. Like some people say, like they're showing, they're, they're saying what they're doing. Like, um, uh, okay. Here's the question. Would the dehydrator take the moisture out? No, because I'll, um, I'll cover it. So like I said, I'll either put some saran wrap over it, but, um, a lot of times it's still quite damp and, um, I'm only doing it for a few hours and I have not had it dry it out. I haven't had that problem. Um, and so, so, so as long as you're keeping it covered, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, because I know like some, some houses have the type of heater where well, all like forced air here, it blows warm air into the house. And, you know, if you're going to set a project next to like the, the heater vent, yeah, you do run the risk of it drying out, but if you're able to put a lid on it, it you know, and keep it from drying out, you're you're going to be okay. Um, I, I think anyways, and let's see, I like to keep it around 100 degrees. So Scott Walker and I from Rad Dyes, we were just talking about this. His attic is super hot and he has access to his attic. I don't, but I mean, yeah, if you can like walk your bin up to an attic where it's super hot, and then also people put it in the trunk of their car on a hot day. Yep. Just that, that sauna heat. Heat is key. Um, as long as you can keep it from drying out. That's, that's the biggest thing. Um, let's see. Oh, there he is. There's Scott right there. So he said, I wrap my work in a trash bag and then place it on a raised rack over my register in my bathroom. That's what he and I were just talking about. So. Yeah, getting getting that temperature elevated and you know, if you can get it done quicker than 48 hours, which is what I typically am doing now, hey, I'm all for it. Summertime, I take my bins outside as long as it's covered. So like once so this is okay, for me and we're jumping ahead because it's not summertime and we will talk about this when we get to summertime. I don't want my ice to melt really super fast. So once the ice is melted, I will then take my project outdoors, cover it with a lid or foil or whatever, and let it cook. And then I can, you know, do it in 24 hours. But, you know, you don't want to speed it up so fast because I do think, like as Margo just showed us earlier, your ice matters. And maybe if you're melting your ice too fast, it can change the whole outcome of your project. So. Yeah, because it could it could it could wash it out before it has a chance to set. I've had that yeah. happen where something melted so fast and the blue just rinsed right out. Yeah, it yeah because it couldn't it couldn't bond. Um, so I mean that these are good things to do. Like these I, these sound like really good upcoming experiments that you know all of us should be going through to figure out you know what the difference is. You know like rushing it versus letting it go. And I think when I do mine, I'm going to, I'm going to play with turquoise because turquoise is one of those colors that requires the most attention, at least in my opinion, or blues in general, blues need, blues just need the most help. I think. Let's yeah, see. I agree. Dang. I don't know what the heck I cut my thumb on, but I, I'm telling you, it hurts you guys. Okay. I wonder so if it on the tinfoil. Oh, that might, yeah, when I was, uh, yeah. The so I, that's, that totally, because I'm like, I don't know what I was doing, but I right on my knuckle. So Janet says, I, I put my shoe rack in my dryer, set my dyes on the rack with high heat. Okay, so Janet, do you make sure, though, to cover it up so that the heat doesn't dry out your project? 
Because what it's my understanding, like the moment that stuff dries out, it's it's a wrap. No more batching. Am I right on that, Margo? Is that what you yeah. understand too? Yeah. Yeah. Foil. Yeah. I, I think foil and saran wrap are our friend. <laughs> yeah, the only thing with foil is I found that um like you can see it on this tray, the soda ash, it reacts and it turns it black. So that's why I put down that um I put down the, that washcloth because I don't want it to mark my project. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Like I've got my foil tray here and you can see the reaction from the soda ash and the dye around the rim, but this is just my little, um, my catcher. It just catches all the muck water. I rarely do this whole foil wrap thing. I've never had a problem with it though. I've never noticed any discoloration so far, cross my fingers, it doesn't happen this time. But using foil around my project, I haven't had an issue. But I, I do see, like you can see it, like the oxidization that's going on here. You can even see it on the bottom, kind of. I love these little foil pans from the dollar store. So, Marco, um, the shirt that you're wearing, what do you know? What color? What you? What colors you used on that? It's so beautiful. This is the it's, plum. This is the plum port and Mars Mars dust I told you about last week. Oh yeah, I love it. I love yeah, it. And then this is the one we were talking about, and this is why I had suggested those colors. And then um, this one had been for sale in my office for a while, and so that this was one of the ones I did that polish the turd challenge in the dying for splits group, and so I stenciled it. I use jacquard textile paint. And so I've got mandalas and I've got a little heart. And so I, I just, uh, I schnazzed it up with a bunch of different things. No, the, your, your schnazzing is what's really making it for me. I love that. Thank you. Um, maybe, maybe upcoming one of these days, you know, you can kind of teach us how to do everything you did there because it is so it's so feminine and so beautiful and it just takes a, a regular watercolor and makes it fantastic. Thank you. Well, and, and so I've been doing this with the stencil paint, uh, stenciling with the paint, but then I've also used the Jacquard decolorant paste and I'll stencil that on and then you have to let it dry for, you know, like 24 hours and then you iron it and it takes the color back out. You and I were talking about that and mm -hmm. certain colors that will leave the blue behind, but they'll take the other colors out. Yeah. And that, that sweatshirt or hoodie, whatever it was that you did was beautiful as well. So, I mean, I would, I have, I have got a whole bunch of stencils. Like a lot of you maybe have seen it, that, that pretty lady that I did, um, where it was like a reverse dye where I used the decolorant. I have that one. And actually you just reminded me, I've got like three of those lady stencils to do a giveaway. So maybe Margo sometime we'll talk about it privately. Uh, but I think we should, maybe if you want to, uh, do another video and I, that would be an opportunity for me to give away, um, some of those stencils. Um, cause I got them to do it and I totally forgot about, about it until just now. So maybe I'll do something special because I usually do my giveaways in a video for the whole world to see. But, you know, for those of you that keep tuning in on a regular basis, maybe I should do a giveaway. Hey, oh, well, I was going to say, maybe I should do a giveaway right this second, but I couldn't. I can't give Margo the secret word. So, so next time, next time, Margo, not the, not the word, but the number, because I want it to be fair. Maybe Margo, do, would you like to go live another time someday? Sure. I've really been having fun with this. Oh, I, I love it. I have a blast too. So maybe Margo in the future or soon or what next time, whatever, um, we can go live again. And for those of you that tune in, to these lives, um, I've got all kinds of cool stuff to give away. Um, I've got, I've got this. Um, I'm gonna push this out. I'm gonna actually just take it off the table so I don't bump it. <clears throat> ah! There it went. Whoops. 
I'm going to take it off the table so I don't bump it. And there it goes. I oh, knocked it over. Oh, no. Oh, well. Okay. I saved it. Okay. I've got diet all over. But I want to show you guys what I got to give away. I have a couple of these to give away. Ooh. Ooh. I've, got, ooh, I've got dial over my hand. And actually, this is a good moment. I want to segue just a second. So one of our own, uh, Jen, boredomwithjen.com, her mom, her mom is having a, a lot of troubles. And so the short story is, is they had to um, get rid of their Shopify because they lost their domain name. And they had to create a new Etsy account. So all of you guys know how to contact her from her old Etsy. But what we need to learn and know now is it's, it's Shop Boredom with Jen. And you'll find a link down below in the description box. But she's the lovely lady. Her um, and John make these Cindy Pullers and Matching Caddy sets. And I have a couple of them that are actually I need to give away. But I want you guys to to hear me and pay attention because if you try to go and find the old website, you're not going to find it. So I don't want you to think that she's no longer available. It's just changed. Etsy shop boredom with Jen. So I have these two um, sets to give away. Oh, those are gorgeous. Yeah, they are absolutely stunning. So this one is magenta and green and this one is magenta and gold. And they're absolutely beautiful. So, um, moving forward, for those because I know a lot of you uh, are the regulars and you tune in, and I want to give back. So um, maybe next time Margot and I are able to go live together, I'll give one of these away, and she and I can figure out the secret code <laughs> before, and then we'll figure out um, to give one away. So and. You know, something to look forward to, right, you guys? But look at how beautiful these are. Margo, do you have one of these sinew polars? I do. I have one of the really early ones. So I have one before they were all the fun iridescent colors. But, uh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. I, I, I have, I've got those too. And I've got just about one in every color because I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> and my caddy doesn't have the little scoop out in the side for the drill it's flat across there and i think you know it's like she keeps improving the design and it's awesome yes um 100 i was gonna see if i i don't but yeah here i'll show you guys so what margo's talking about so my very first caddy the first edition didn't have these uh the little notches which is fine because if you have one of these it still works all you have to do is just hold hold it a little bit but then um, they created these little notches so you can spool it up one-handed. It goes really quick. And they have a new model that's even coming out that's even better than these. And um, those will be launching here really soon. So I'm excited to get the word out. So again, you guys hear me. Uh, the pleating tools, the spoons, everything for us tie-dyers, it's shop boredom with Jen over on Etsy and um, the link is down below. So um, I'm going to give one of these away uh, next time Margo and I go live. Okay. I'm excited about it. And then as soon as I hit 25,000 subscribers, which is coming, it's probably going to take a couple of months. I will give the other one away. So tell all of your friends, everybody hit subscribe create like all like 10 fake accounts and hit subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half kidding. But as soon as we get there at 25,000 subscribers, I will do another giveaway. And also, like I said, we'll do those. Um, well, let me hear. Give me one second, you guys. It's just right here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Boy. Because there's a lot of you that might not even know uh, which which um, stencil I'm referring to. I think they're in here. So I have this beautiful lady stencil, and I bought several of them, small ones, 
to do a giveaway from, and I completely forgot until I was looking at Margot's shirt here. And um, I want to give these away because they're doing me no good having them just sit over there on the floor. Oh, so this is one of the big ones. It's probably hard to see, but it's a, it's she's a beautiful lady with a feather in her hair. So this would be, you know, for a, a big project. But I have several of these. And so I just want you guys to keep in mind and stay tuned because I got some fun summertime stuff coming up in the future. And then and at the same time, Margot can teach us how to use the paint and stuff because I've never done the paint before. I just have only used the decolorant. And boy, oh boy, that stuff stinks so bad. Oh, and my iron. Well, it was funny. My husband came out one morning um, and he asked, I can't remember what he asked me, but he smelled it. And he was like, if the smell woke him up, the other room, <laughs> it smells bad. He was like, honey, are you okay? <laughs> what are you doing out there? <laughs> yeah. It, it smells like... Um, rotten eggs but worse it's just it's so it smells like a hair permanent remember back in the old days when we get the yeah. crazy permanents it smells oh like yeah it does it has that it has that smell like a really bad sulfur smell boiling eggs or you know natural gas but chemical like a chemical smell so you definitely want to do it when you you're able to open a window or even do it outdoors um, well, I, I guess out white bright, you know, same thing, just really disgusting smelling. So I'm, I'm trying to get it to where you can see how pretty she is, but the, the glare is. No, oh, we can see her. I can see her. No, so she's, she's gorgeous. And so I've got, I've got this big one and then I have, I think I have two or three, you know, smaller, regular t-shirt size ones. So, I, like, for instance, on the shirt that you're wearing now, putting this somewhere, like, on, even on the front or the back or whatever, with that beautiful watercolor, I think it would just be fantastic because she's just, she's so gorgeous. So I could see that on the back of a duster, like one of those rayon dusters. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's nice and long. And because this is so large. Yeah. It, you know, because on a, I did mine on the front. I did this size on the front of a 2XL shirt, which it looks great, but it's like the whole entire shirt, which is fine. Um, so it has to be, this size has to be done on something large. So anyways, I'm excited about it. Cause like I said, I completely forgot about all these. I got these back. I probably barely even had 1000 subscribers when I was planning to do these for a giveaway. And here we are almost at 25,000 subscribers. So one totally the, forgot. One of the I'm other things I do is um, wood blocking too. So um, like, I don't know if you guys can that? see. So there are, there are these wooden stamps. Can you see that? So, I, um, so this is a metallic gold paint stamped on a black shirt. And so there's um, a gentleman on Etsy who makes these, because I do medieval reenactment. And so, um, so these are Norse stamps. Oh, okay. And so that's something like if we're, if we're playing with the stencils and mandalas, I could also demo how to do the stamping. Do you make those stamps? No, I bought them off of somebody on Etsy. Oh, okay. Actually, I have a few different people on Etsy because I have some ginkgo leaf stamps. Um, I have a lot of toys. Well, why did you call it wood blocking? Like, I've never heard that before. Why not just call it stamping? Um, because they're actually wood blocks. Oh, okay. I've never, I've just never heard of it before. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm crafty, but I'm not super crafty. So uh, the reenactments, do you, you put on like a, like, like a fancy dress and all that type of stuff? Yes. Um, so this is so this is stamping. So it's like a it's a rubber stamp, and it's on an acrylic block. And this is a wood block. So it's actually carved out of wood. 
And so they act a little bit differently when you go to stamp with them because this is very solid and unforgiving where, and the rubber stamp has a little bit of give to it. And so they just, they stamp slightly differently. Okay, they're finally caught up. Okay, so is that plexiglass? Oh, oh there, okay, I see the wood now. Oh, it's that's so pretty. It's acrylic. Oh, okay, acrylic. Acrylic with so rubber. That that wooden one, that's like what you dip the gold paint in and put it on the shirt you have now type of a thing? Like that's kind of what you use? Um, so I have not used this one yet. It's brand new. Um, I did. Oh. This is all stencils on this one, but um, I, I picked up a variety of new ones to play with. Yeah, they're so pretty. Now, does that paint need like any special requirements? Like, do you have to heat set it with an iron or anything like that? Yes, and I use the Jacquard textile paint. I've played with a number of different um, textile paints, and I like theirs the best. And um, the one I have on, it's a pearlescent paint. So it has a really pretty sheen to it. And you iron it. And even after you iron it, it still feels a little stiff. But after it's been washed, it's um, washed and dried, it's nice and pliable. I mean, you can still feel it, but it really doesn't feel any different than um, like a shirt that has something printed on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, I think it has made all the difference in the world to the watercolor shirt that you're wearing. Because I like to make a lot of those watercolor shirts. And, you know, there are some areas where it's like, oh, it's a little too pigmented, doesn't look so good. And I could see where that's a great way to improve the situation. Yeah, I want to learn how to do that. So I would love it if you would love to go live again and teach us all how you made that beautiful shirt you're wearing. Sure, you bet. So let's see. Oh, uh, Christy says LARP. Larper Margot. What's so LARP? What's LARPing? I don't know what that is. LARPing is live action role playing. And oh, okay. so that's kind of like uh if you ever heard of people playing Dungeons and Dragons, well, this I, is people yeah. actually like dressing as characters and they go to these campsites and they they are these characters acting out these parts and there's points involved and everything. I don't actually do LARP. I do it's called the Society for Creative Anachronism. And so it's medieval reenactment. And uh, I focus on the Viking Age. What is your, what's your role? Like, what do you do? Or do you cook the drumsticks? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm, so I'm teasing. I, I do a lot of, well, I used to do a lot of uh, costuming. The medieval clothing, I um, focused on uh, Viking Norse clothing. Um, but then I discovered tie-dye and I, don't really do a whole lot of that anymore because I have too much fun with tie dye. Well, I think it's wonderful. I, I mean, I, I like magical type stuff. So I bet you really enjoy uh, Amanda Happy Cat tie dye, like her dyes, because her names have a lot of fantasy type sounding names. Yes, she she and I have discussed this. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they they have the magical like the dragons dragon's egg or whatever it, or it, i what it makes me think of is um the hbo show um oh game, of thrones. game of thrones yeah the game, the game of thrones and i think about the the dragon's eggs so very it's just super magical fun 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 stuff well i would love to do something like that soon i don't know can we, we would have to, maybe we'd have to do like a two-part series where we watercolor a shirt first and then get our supplies and come back and do the painting. But I would love to do that. I would sure. love to learn. Absolutely. I would love to do that. Um, Lila has asked, can you do the, is it, is it batik how you say it? The batik, batik. Um, can you batik with those wood stamps? I don't think so because... Um, to do batik, you've got to have that hot melted wax. And so I think you have to have a hot metal tool in order to keep that wax liquid. Because as soon as this hits that hot wax, it's going to get cold and stuck to this. So I, I don't think that you could use this for that. Um, but I have never done batik. Well, I did batik in high school. But uh, we had like these pen-like tools that you would do melted wax with. 
but I've never done it with um, stamped forms, but I've seen the seen those on Etsy and they're like these metal forms that have to be heated up and dipped in the wax. Yeah, I've never tried it either. I've seen uh, on Instagram and stuff like some of the artists. I mean, it's it's amazing, amazing talent. Uh, for me, that would be opening a can of worms to a whole nother, <laughs> almost like a whole nother hobby I would have to set up and gear for, you know? And so I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay with just keeping it right now at, at tie dye and tie dye related type stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'd have to like get a whole melt, wax melting thing and certain pots and how do I get the wax out of the shirt? As I'm, I'm not, I'm not there yet. You know, give me ten years to get over this and maybe I'll move into that. Right now I'm pretty content. I have jar. Uh, jars of dye I haven't even opened yet oh, before I start, <laughs> you know, before I branch off into a whole nother aspect, I need to like try to get through my, my first love. <laughs> so let's see. Leanne says, uh, she stepped, was it Leanne? She stepped away and now she's really confused. <laughs> oh, we're just, we're wrapping up. We're just chit chatting and we're wrapping up and just talking about, um, upcoming projects we want to maybe work on and some giveaways and you know stay tuned for some of that you don't want to miss out on that and margo was just kind of giving us a, a little bit of you know a snippet into her life and what she's into and um but we, we're we're talking about potentially um uh, doing some watercolor uh ice dyes and then margo's going to teach us how to do some stencil painting on our work um, and I'm excited about that because, I, as I mentioned, sometimes I do a watercolor and there's maybe an area that quite didn't quite turn out well. And it's a good way to, you know, fix or hide a, a little pimple on your shirt. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, I think we've done a really good job today. Um, thank you again, Margo, for, you know, showing us the, the freaky fan fold. The, the Margot Farnsworth specialty. Um, I'm super excited to see how it's going to turn out. I'm nervous. Me but too. I'm excited. <laughs> and I'm excited to see how your twofer is going to turn out. Like this, this is a, a good uh, experiment that you're running. Um, Cause as, as far as I know, nobody's done a, a twofer um, shibori at the end of the gutter. So, I mean, you could be really onto something here. So I'm excited. Oh, and yes, Denise, thank you. Yes, for all of you that are still here, please, if you can, hit that um, like button. It just it just helps YouTube know, and maybe they won't cut us off at two hours next time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. Does anybody have any questions, last minute questions about the project that we did today before we sign off? Because I, we're, Margo and I, we're going to set it aside, let it batch. She may uh, irrigate hers with hot, salty water. I might just let mine be and see what happens. And, and then next time we come together, we'll talk about what we ended up doing and what we can do differently or not do and all that good jazz. Okay. Well, I don't, I'm not seeing any questions for the night. So again... Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for your patience for coming back. I know that was, well, it was really frustrating for me. And Margo, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your patience. I know I was really losing it there for a minute, and you talked me off the ledge. <laughs> oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> well, good, 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 good. And I'd love to have you again sometime soon. And I'll just say this, you guys. I'm up on my ladder here to take me down so I don't want to scream. You guys know that I'm asking you out there in the universe, please be a guest for one of these lives. I don't want to have to chase you all down and beg you like, please, please, please. If you want to do it, if you want to go live, just like what you've seen Scott and I do together, now Margo and I do together, please message me. We can make it happen. Margo, what do you think? It's not hard, right? It's no, it's not. And, and it's really fun because it's like you're having a conversation in your living room um, and then the, the conversation's off to the side. I had anxiety speaking in front of groups of people. And I was actually, this 
I didn't feel anxious at all because I could see the conversation, but I'm not looking out at a sea of faces. <laughs> right. I mean, that's, that's why I've always been saying we're just talking amongst our friends. It's all of our friends and in the Belladonna community group, in the ice die group, uh, happy or um, friendly tie dye. Like all of us, we're all in the same groups. We're amongst friends. It's just us. So there's nothing to be scared of. And we're just having fun, just talking about tie dye. So I would love for any of you, anybody, it, 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 it doesn't matter. We're just tie dyeing. So if if your skill level is nothing more than just making a spiral, I have no problem with that because it's all just about community and having fun. So I know people have said, oh, well, I don't really have anything to offer. Well, of course you do. We're making tie dye. You have something to offer. So please, if you're interested in going live, contact me. I cannot hunt you guys down. So like, hint, hint, Lila. <laughs> I'm ready for you when you're ready. So, you know, get in touch with me. Okay. So let's see, Lila. Thanks guys. Scared to try this, but looks super fun. I'm down to do a tester for a live to see if my setup is going to work. Yes. So that's what uh, Margo and I did. It only took what, a five minutes. We made sure that we could turn the camera on link up. It, I mean, you know, we didn't do a whole live or a, like a, session, we just made sure that we could connect. It took a few minutes and we were off and running. So I'm ready, Lila. M Moon dies. I'm ready. Okay, guys. Well, we've been on here long enough. It's, I know it's really late. Margot needs to go to bed. She has to work tomorrow. So I could talk about tie-dye till tomorrow. <laughs> and then Amanda's going to say it already is tomorrow. <laughs> okay, you guys. Oh, Christy. Christy has a question. What's your question, Christy? Um, okay, are you talking about the gutter front down in the gutter or front upside? Um, so front down in the gutter or front upside. Are you asking about uh, like the point of the shirt? So Margo, you, you still have yours on the table. So the point, of the, the point of the shirt, which is the center front, is up. And, and so it, it, it angles down towards the hem. So, yeah, the, the point of the shirt is up and the thick, bulky part is down at the bottom. And then I don't I don't know if this is part of the question, but it doesn't matter necessarily if the top of the shirt or the back of the shirt is up. It's just as long as that the point is at the top of the incline. I hope that answers the question. I think that's what it is. Which, which side is up? Yeah, I think we just answered it. The the thin part, the point up at the top of the incline. Uh, okay, front of the shirt on the gutter flat. Oh, okay. So she wants to know, does it matter if the front of the shirt is on top or the front or the back of the shirt is on top? I think we answered that. I think it doesn't matter if it's the top, like the like the front of the shirt or the the back of the shirt, right? Because of the way the folds go back and forth, it it doesn't really matter because as we're folding it, it's like back side up, front side up, back side up, front side up. So um, as it gets folded, it just doesn't matter if it's the the front is on top or on the bottom because it's kind of on both, if yeah. that makes sense. It's just you want that center point up so that all of the flow goes out from the center. Yeah. And she says, gotcha. Yeah. So, okay. Good. I mean, that was a great question. Great question. I mean, I had that question too. So it was a great question. So I'm excited to see everybody's work. So uh, when you guys get yours done, when you get into the group, please tag me and tag Margot. That way we can see what you came up with. Because I, you guys, I would love to see everybody's everything, but it's it's difficult. I don't have a lot of time. I can barely get to all the questions and comments and all of that. Like I, I would like to do more. So if you tag me, 
it will give me a notification and I can see it. And I would love to see what you guys came up with, what colors you used, all of that fun stuff. So definitely tag us. All right, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to hang it up. So, um, I'm also going to be moving these to Saturdays, every other Saturdays at noon, I think for now. Now, if that doesn't work for your schedule, if you guys want to do it on a different day, like meaning, I'm just going to say, Lila, if you can't do it on a Saturday, if we have to do it on a Thursday, it's not a big deal. We just need to give everybody notification. But I think every other Saturday at noon would be easier for a lot of people that are overseas as well. So, cause I want to, I want to make it good for everybody. So, but I will let you guys know for sure. So, okay. Well, Margo, Oh, you got your kitty. I have my Who's kitty. <laughs> he had to come and see what was going on. Who is this? His name is Hank. Hank. He's cute. I love cats. I do too. <laughs> Okay, so Christy says, I work night shifts on the weekends. Um, well, uh, I really want to try to accommodate everybody. I, I mean, I, I, I do. It's just, it's so difficult because I know, um, like, Janica, she's in New Zealand. It's midnight right now. It's probably three o'clock in the morning right now. And Amanda has it the worst of all where she's at in the UK. You know, she didn't, this didn't get started for her until midnight. So I was thinking if we did it on Saturdays at noon earlier, it would help people. I don't know. What? Well, it's a lot to think about. I want to accommodate everybody and I just want to keep having fun. I think if I tried to do it two days a week, it would just be really too much though. You know, we, we don't want to like run a good thing into the ground, right? So every other Saturday is good. What's your schedule like, Margot? Are you available on Saturdays? Saturdays can be uh, challenging because that's sometimes the days that we have our medieval events. Um, okay. So we would just, I would just, you know, we just have to plan it out ahead of time. Yeah. Or, or even Sundays, like Saturday or Sunday would also work for me. Okay. I, I mean, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking aloud, you know. Well, any day, I, I mean, it, we could, we could always work it out. Okay. Well, all right, guys. I like, I can just keep talking and talking and talking and talking. <laughs> Margo, thank you again. Thank you everybody for tuning in for all of you that gave super chats tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. All of the content goes back into the channel, um, to just keep bringing out new content. So I greatly appreciate it. I want all of you to take good care and we will see you next time in the live. And don't forget the next time I go live, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for one of those sinew polars, so you don't want to miss it. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, Margot. Bye.